2021, nerds. We made it! You made it, and I, Jordan Breeding, who is only LARPing as a doctor, unless, unless you're not a cop, in which case I take Venmo, I have also made it so far. You're watching the first 2021 episode of Your Brain on Crack, the show that really encourages you to just get out there and uh, recruit your friends and family into watching, and the only show on Crack all about creating a cult following. So today I'll barely legally diagnose. For some reason, filmmakers think it's more interesting to depict the alien invasion itself rather than the underground hip hop sci-fi music fusion scene that would inevitably sweep Eastern Europe's dance clubs afterwards. Movies always want to explore specific conflicts, but I want to explore specific subcultures those conflicts would create. And then maybe start one of my own. I mean, if you're interested, maybe you could join. Maybe give me your bank account information. Somewhere between all the F-bombs and the decapitated Mexicans, Logan pauses for a moment to show us how comic books work in its universe. Logan, the X-Man, doesn't seem all that impressed with comic book writers' journalistic integrity, but he admits there's an objective historical truth to some of what they've written. Did you just call me Blob? Comics are based on real struggles in mutant history, albeit romanticized and blown so out of proportion they enter the realm of fantasy, you know. Because true mutant history is so grounded, so nuanced. <laughs> but you can't have historical fiction without some history, so there are absolutely historians in the background doing their best to catalog mutant-related events. But it's not that simple because in Logan, a mutant triggered catastrophe turns the world so anti-mutant that recording their history, and especially recording it in such a fun, digestible way as a comic book, would be like if somebody made a web series based on the heroic and silly adventures of Osama bin Laden and his super terrorism squad. She said, you like we bin Laden. Laura seems to like the comics because mutants are presented as heroes, but that would run directly counter to popular opinion. Comic conventions would be the equivalent of heading to the Javits Center dressed like SEAL Team 6 or high-ranking Al-Qaeda members. You're harboring a fugitive. Also, is this limited to just comic books or does this timeline have a Marvel Cinematic Universe that's presented as biopics? Would seeing the new Deadpool movie be the in-world equivalent of Spielberg's Lincoln? Would Deadpool himself be played by method acting Daniel Day-Lewis? The only people seeing Marvel movies will be members of the Academy and boring history buffs. A warrior has nothing to be ashamed of. And since the battles waged by mutants would be some of the biggest, most dramatic in American history, you can bet there would be even more Marvel Civil War reenactors than we have for the actual Civil War. People would keep the memory of the Battle of Alcatraz alive by pantomiming in Phoenix and Magneto cosplay and just hurling, you know, homemade styrofoam fireballs at one another. Lightning bolt! Ah! Lightning bolt! Sleep! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Sleep! Lightning bolt! One thing that wouldn't change is we would still call them dorks. That would stay consistent across all worlds. From the perspective of the audience, the events of the first Terminator make perfect sense. Of course the futuristic murder bot sent back in time to kill the mother of the human resistance leader opposing sentient machines in an apocalyptic future would experience some setbacks. You're a terminated It'd be hard to find the right Sarah Connor on the first try, so naturally he'd have to kill all the women in the phone book with that name. And as soon as we buy the premise that Terminator was sent back with just a name and a city, everything from the murders of the Sarah Connors to the police station shootout to the robot getting crushed by hydraulic press, it all follows naturally. I don't want it! Any of it! But nobody in the film's version of LA has any idea what the hell happened. And that means that Terminator's Los Angeles is about to be beset by nerdy true crime enthusiasts desperate to make sense of by far the most mysterious and suspicious murder spree of all time. All they know for sure is that two women named Sarah Connor were brutally murdered, and the third was at the center of the most brazen and deadly attack on a police station since the Santa Claus. <laughs> Sarah Connor just kind of wandered off after the slaughter, so it seems like the events of the film have been largely forgotten. She only ends up in an insane asylum in the second movie because she tried to bomb a computer factory several years later. Spent a lot of time in Nicaragua and places like that. So either nobody knows she was part of what would be considered a major high profile crime, or she somehow managed to prove her innocence maybe by like claiming that she just accidentally stumbled into a mysterious factory with a dead body that nobody could identify and a bunch of pipe bombs like on her way to Wegmans. 
I'll be back. Regardless, this is basically the most intriguing unsolved mystery ever. Imagine how awesome the serial season about this would be. The Terminator crimes would obsess fanboys right up until Judgment Day melted their bones. I don't want it! The first time we see Batman in Nolan's The Dark Knight, he's cleaning up a messy situation created by a bunch of wannabe bad people. When the hapless vigilantes ask Batman what makes him so much better than them, he points out that their clothes are stupid. Because I guess the primary requirement for superheroism is the money to hire a really fancy seamstress. Yet here we are. In the Nolan universe, Batman is presumably the only superhero. The only other possible superheroes are the League of Shadows ninjas who only pop up every few centuries like self-righteous chlamydia. You know how to disappear. We can teach you to become truly invisible. As the only one of his kind, Batman is probably inspiring terrible target brand vigilantes all over the country who've read BuzzFeed's 10 hottest facts about Gotham's Cape Crusader. You complete me. Would-be imitators likely intently study Batman's methods, poring over footage of his fights and testing homemade gliders off the roof of their local Arby's. You just know there's some overweight, middle-aged man in Wichita, Kansas running around in a cosplay Batman mask punching loiterers in the dick. Never start with the cloaca. The victim gets all fuzzy. For obvious reasons, the real Batman can't reveal his identity or maintain any sort of official internet presence, which presumably means that some 13-year-old kid is in charge of keeping the Batman official Twitter account up to date on all of Batman's favorite restaurants and making sure that hashtag Joker sucks butt really just takes off. We're trying to help you. Just like in the real world, somebody somewhere is profiting on off-brand Batman apparel and selling unlicensed bumper stickers of Batman just like pissing on stuff. Walmart could easily sell the official Batman cod piece now with removable self-esteem. I didn't know you are so kinky. Every major event in American history creates crackpot conspiracy theorists or truthers or assholes. You will perish in flame! Yeah. What an asshole. These are the people who say 9-11 was an inside job, or the moon landing was directed by Stanley Kubrick, and that uh, Keanu Reeves is an immortal being who will never age, which <laughs> I'm saying as a joke, but that's the only one I can't really prove isn't true. Whoa. The ghost attack on New York City and Ghostbusters would arguably be the biggest event in American history. The event was widely publicized and witnessed firsthand by thousands of New York citizens, but somehow by Ghostbusters 2, nobody believes the attack happened. The Busters themselves are now stuck working kids' birthday parties. We go! We Can you imagine if that was the ultimate fate of 9-11 first responders? Apparently all of New York City woke up the day after the attack, washed 15 pounds of marshmallow gunk out of their hair, and then instead of never forget, immediately forgot. Yeah, but what a ride. You just know that the Ghostbusters version of 4chan is bogged down with thousands of marshmallow truthers providing proof of the attack. The difference is that they'd be right. And from news reports to eyewitness accounts, there'd be a lot of evidence pointing to there having been some sort of attack on New York City from an otherworldly marshmallow creature and his ghost minions. See that, truthers? There is an alternate universe where you could conceivably be right. That's the biggest victory you'll ever get. Well, there's something you don't see every day. The best picture winning Birdman is a movie about a play filmed like a play. And the film's chaotic single take approach mixed with magical realism and just the jazziest drum score add up to a film clearly designed to give audience members PTSD flashbacks to their own elementary school play experiences. Take it easy, I take it easy, I know this is hard. And the play even ends with lead actor Reagan shooting himself right in the damn nose, which especially reminds me of fifth grade drama. Pimple faced gamers creeping in their pants. Prior to Riggins' attempted suicide, he is dogged by his detractors, both real and imaginary, all trying to convince him that his play will fail. While the stress created by arguing with an imaginary bird man is the more memorable moment, Riggins' staunchest opponent is drama critic Tabitha Dickinson. She tells Riggins that no matter what happens, she's gonna eviscerate his play in her review, effectively killing it before anybody can actually see it. She hates that Riggins, a former movie superstar, has the audacity to leverage his low culture fame into a Broadway run. <laughs> but thanks to Riggins' willingness to leave it all on the stage, or at least all of his nose, on the stage, Tabitha comes around. I mean, she dubs Riggins' play a resounding success and claims he has created a new theater movement, super realism. By shedding literal blood on stage, Riggins brought the theater into a more intense and even more self-destructive realm. That's how you got me into this shit. 
While that may sound like the overexcited enthusiasm of a critic desperately trying to get somebody to read their words instead of watching yet another cracked video about their words, which like, good luck lady. You're a lazy f The movie presents Tabitha as the single most important living theater critic. Her words matter. Add that to Riggin's notoriety as one of the world's most famous actors, and you can bet people are reading the hell out of that review and taking it very seriously. Yes, yes! In the real world, actors subject themselves to intense punishment via method acting all the time, even despite mixed results. Honka, honka. What happens when you make almost killing yourself on stage the hippest new theatrical movement? You create an entire subculture of artists shoehorning semi-suicidal methods into their own works. If you think biting the head off a bat is an intense stunt for a metal concert, wait until Daniel Radcliffe just chops his dick off at the end of a big musical number. Theater's gonna get hardcore as hell. Look at these people, look at their eyes. They're all sparkling. They love the shit. They love blood. They love action. Not this talking, depressing, philosophical bullshit. Yeah, so we discussed how being a superhero is mostly about owning the right underwear, dreamt about a world where my fan fiction is considered historical fiction, and revealed the title of J.K. Rowling's next book, The Castration of Harry Potter. Wow, I think that's it. Be sure to see Kathy on your way out for some delicious Kool-Aid. No, don't worry, don't worry, it's grape. Happy New Year! Hi, I'm Dr. Jordan Breeding, and I would like to invite you personally to join my community. We have lots of things that will make your life better, just so much better. And all you've got to do to join us is like, subscribe, and send me your daughters. That's it. I don't know, I don't... Is this, would you join this cult? I don't feel like I'm... Do you want to join my cult?